Well, hello and uh, welcome everyone to Alternative Design's presentation of The Future of Investing, Principal Protected Portfolio Design. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim Harding. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Alternative Design and I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to uh, join us today. You know, I'm going to talk about something today that, that I really believe in very, very strongly. Uh, the financial world is changing very, very rapidly. And I believe we're going to find in the next three to five years that the standard basics, you know, investing 101, uh, is going to undergo a complete overhaul. And that overhaul has already started happening. And so what we're going to talk about today is your opportunities to get on top of this wave and <laughs> get to the front of the line uh, and be there first with principal protected portfolio design uh, utilizing market linked CDs. And I'm going to talk uh, quite a bit about indexing theory because much of what you think you know and, and appreciate about uh, modern indexing theory as sent to you by the insurance industry uh, is undergoing a radical transformation right now. And if I may be so blunt, the insurance industry, as is often the case, is lagging a little bit behind. They will catch up, I have no doubt. Uh, but they're lagging a little bit behind right now. And I think you're going to see some interesting things about the concept of indexing uh, that you might not be aware of. You know, as always, uh, I'll be happy to take questions at the end. Uh, please, if you have a question during the uh, course of the webinar, feel free to go ahead and type it into the chat box on your control panel. And uh, as uh, normal, uh, I will be more than happy to pull those up at the end of the presentation and walk through as many of those as I can get to. So with that, let's go back and do a little bit of review. I've talked about this particular survey from BlackRock, one of the largest asset managers in the country, uh, several times before. And they, they do this once a year. They take a survey of, of their investors to basically find out what the investors are thinking. And even though I've mentioned it before, I, I think it's worth uh, reviewing once again, especially for those of you who perhaps are just joining us for the first or second time. What BlackRock found in this particular survey uh, was very, very interesting and uh, worth noting. First of all, they found that about half of the investors in the country uh, are concerned uh, about their financial future. And about half are feeling pretty good but about half of the country, about half of the investors in the country, I should say, uh, are concerned about their financial future. And this concern translates into actions in uh, a couple of different ways. And the, and the big way that, you know, that I have talked about over and over, because this is such a startling, startling uh, number, uh, is that this survey by, by BlackRock found that 48% of the investable dollars in the United States is sitting in cash. I'm just let that sink in for a moment. Almost one half of all the investable dollars in the United States is on the sidelines. It's not invested. That 48% creates a number that we have never seen before in this industry, although it's being talked a lot about right now. That represents $13.1 trillion, uh, not invested, but instead sitting in cash on the sidelines. And for you and I, uh, the problem with that uh, is that those assets aren't in a shoebox stuffed in the back of the closet. They're you know, not in a safe down in the basement, and they're not stuffed under the mattress. Those investable dollars right now are sitting in low interest paying accounts in the banking sector of the economy. This creates a huge, huge opportunity for you, and I'm going to try and explain to you or, or illustrate to you how you can capture uh, your share of these investable dollars. You know, when you have that much money sitting on the sidelines, uh, it indicates uncertainty about the future. So what people are really saying when they're willing to accept interest rates that are below the core inflation rate in the country, where they know they're going to be losing purchasing power, 
when they're willing to do that, uh, it's because one thing matters to them above all others, and that is safety of principle. Safety of principle. And you know, let's just face the reality. Some folks spell safety FDIC. And for those individuals, only an FDIC insured product is going to give them the security blanket that they need. For others, not so much, but they're still looking for safety. They're still looking for principal protection, and they would be happy if they could find it in other places. Uh, but the added security wrapper of FDIC insurance uh, is a critical component going forward when we're talking about the future of investing. You know, with 48% of the investable dollars sitting in cash, you know, what would Warren Buffett think about that? Well, we know what he would think. <laughs> Warren Buffett says that cash is the worst investment you could ever own. And yet half of the investable dollars, almost half of the investable dollars in the U.S. are sitting in that position right now. In other words, 48% of the investable dollars in the United States are sitting in what Warren Buffett says is the worst investment they could ever make. And, of course, you know, he's got good reason for saying that cash is a, a very, very poor investment. And if you look at this chart here, uh, you can see the uh, returns annual uh, compounded returns from 1926 to 2012 uh, for no particular reason other than this is just a chart I could get my hands on quickly. Uh, but you'll see that stocks before inflation averaged 9.8 percent. After taxes and inflation, the return on stocks was four and a half. Uh, bonds didn't do as well. But if you go over to the right-hand side of, of the chart and look at cash, from 1926 to 2012, cash averaged 3.5%, uh, 05 after inflation was factored in, and actually has a negative return uh, after taxes and inflation. So Warren Buffett is right uh, for a lot of reasons. Cash are their equivalents is one of the worst places to have your money invested. And of course, one of the reasons uh, that it's one of the worst places is not just the return you get, but what you miss out on. And I've cited this article from Investment News many times over the last few months. It actually came out in October of last year. But what it is lamenting is that because all of these investors are sitting with assets in cash, they missed out on one of the best bull market runs we've had in a long, long time. And, you know, the market in 2013, depending on which index you choose to look at, uh, was up over 25%. And those people with 48% of the assets sitting in cash missed out on all of those gains because safety was more important to them than opportunity. But to you and me, Opportunity is the most important thing. And with almost half of the investable dollars sitting on the sidelines, with people looking for safety of principle and occasionally uh, won't do without the added security of FDIC insurance, uh, the opportunities that we have right now are greater than ever before. Especially if we as financial professionals can take a look into the crystal ball and see where things are going. Now, I'm just trying to set the stage here with two issues. Number one, we have virtually half the country concerned about their fi financial futures. And that concern is reflected in almost half of the investable dollars in the United States being on the sidelines. This cannot go on forever. Something has to change. And it is changing. We're entering a new financial era. And you have an opportunity to jump on at the front of the bus uh, and even help drive it. But to do that, you're going to have to rearrange your thinking about financial products and positioning financial products. You're going to have to, in essence, have a paradigm shift and think about things differently. Now, before we start thinking about the future, let's kind of review the history of investing in, in a very, very brief way. You know, back in the day, it used to be really simple. 
you had an appropriate mixture of stocks and bonds. And the mixture, the ratios changed depending on what stage of life you were in. But essentially, investing was for those who had, well, let's say, more substantial assets than the average consumer because they're the ones who could go to the stockbroker. They're the ones who had disposable income and, uh, and, and the ability to set aside money and take the risk that was associated with stocks and bonds. And the only real question about the appropriate investment was how much went into stocks and how much went into bonds. Pretty simple, but only available to a certain segment of the population. Then along came mutual funds, and all of a sudden, the average consumer had the opportunity to participate in the markets for the first time. Mutual funds brought a lot of good things. It brought economy of scale. It made professional money management available to the average consumer who might not be able to afford it before. It gave the average consumer the ability to invest over a broader spectrum of securities than they could probably achieve if they were to invest directly on their own. A lot of good things about mutual funds, but it also brought with it something else that not all typical consumers were prepared for. And that was it brought risk. And it brought the very real possibility that an investor in a mutual fund could lose principal. And many consumers, and I know some of them personally, uh, were never prepared for that eventuality. You know, some of us as financial professionals really weren't prepared for that either. In fact, I know many of you from talking to you in, in the many phone conversations I've had chose to get out of the securities industry entirely because it was difficult to explain losses to mom and pop. It was difficult to counsel someone who, in anticipation of great returns, put part of their nest egg into mutual funds and then found out that part of that nest egg was now gone and may never come back. The evolution came with mutual funds when a guy by the name of Jack Bogle said, you know, there's a better way to invest if you're going to invest in mutual funds. Why trust your returns to a money manager? Because studies show that they seldom outperform the broader market anyway. Why not have the ability to invest in the broad market in the form of an index like the S&P 500 and be invested across the board across all sectors of stocks? Not worry about how good your manager was and since you didn't have to worry about a manager, saved on the fees. It gave people the opportunity for the first time to invest in the broad market. The problem with indexing, especially with indexed mutual funds, uh, is that it didn't do away. It didn't do away with the potential for principal loss. The insurance industry picked up on the idea of indexing a little bit late, but they got in. They got in and created the first products that were not only indexed across the broad market by being linked to the S&P 500 and other indices, but also protected the principal and guaranteed against loss. You know, most of us who are on this particular webinar have made a lot of money helping our clients move out of a principal risk situation into an indexed insurance product that has a guaranteed return of principal and some, not all, but some of the upside market potential. Well, the financial services arena has changed and evolved again. And for the last several years, the watchword in the industry has been assets under management. And I guess the, the basic idea was that if you were not a hands-on manager, at least you could manage the managers by positioning your clients with the appropriate portfolio managers to achieve their goals. The problem 
that really dominates our world right now is often overlooked and it's principal protection. You know, I've said many times on these uh, webinar casts that it's more important not to lose money than it is to make money. A rational client and an, and an informed ad advisor should help clients understand that it's more important to hold on to your principal than it is to maximize returns. You know, you hear people who are well entrenched in the securities industry say all the time, you've got to be invested in the market the whole time to profit from the market. And they talk about, you know, you don't want to miss the best days of the market. Well, here's a very interesting chart that I think brings home my point. If you invested $100,000 in the S&P 500 between 1950 and 2010, and you missed the 40 best days of the market during that period, your $100,000 would have grown to $867,000. But if you'd have been invested the entire time, took the good with the bad, and captured those 40 best days, that $100,000 would have grown to $6.8 million by 2010. Here's the telling number. If you missed the worst 40 days, that 100,000 would have grown to 82.2 million. There's a bigger reward for avoiding losses than there is for capturing the bigger gains over time. Avoiding losses is more important than maximizing the return. And I'm not the first one to say this, and not even because I'm from the insurance industry. Uh, John Loveless here, who is uh, the uh, chairman emeritus of, of Capital Research and Management Company. This is the, the firm that owns the American funds, Amer the American family of, of uh, mutual funds, one of the more respected uh, fund groups in the country, says that it's important to hold up well in bad periods, even if it means not getting the ultimate highest returns in a good period. It doesn't help in the long run to be spectacular in bull markets if you crash in bear markets. In other words, it's more important to hold on to your principal than it is to maximize the returns. And we all know the reason for this. I mean, if you have a 50% loss in your portfolio, then in order to get back to ground zero, in order to get back to square one, a 50% gain won't get you there. No, a 50% loss requires a 100% return in order to make the investor whole because you're working with less capital now after the loss. Now, we like to point to the returns on the S&P 500 and, and pretend that the average investor uh, is getting that return because they're invested in the index. It's not so, and it's not so for a lot of reasons. Uh, you can take a look at this particular chart between 1991 and 2010. The S&P was up 9.1%, but you'll notice right in the middle, the average equity fund investor only made 3.8%, less than half of what the total market returned. And there are several reasons for this, but the clearest, most obvious one is that typical consumers do what? They chase returns. They buy high and they sell low when they capture losses. They don't ride it out uh, like they should. So equity returns for the average consumer have not been that good. Well, it's time to go back to the future. And let's take a look at what I sincerely believe is going to be the way to put together a portfolio, the way investing is going to be in the future, and it's going to be, yes, with indexing, but with a much more sophisticated approach to indexing than you may be familiar with. Now, we all know indexing has a, a number of different advantages. I've already mentioned that it gives 
the investor broad exposure to the market. Uh, because it is an index, there are nominal fees associated with this approach. And of course, since it doesn't need managed, uh, you don't have to worry about picking a bad money manager. But you know what? There are also some serious disadvantages to indexing that, that I want to bring out and put on the table here because they're important to understand. Uh, the first is that you're subject to wherever the market takes you. Uh, you're going <laughs> to you don't have the opportunity to really get on and get off and make a right turn. Uh, you're subjected to wherever the market is going at that particular time. In other words, you don't have the ability to react to changes in the economic environment. You don't have the opportunity to react to global crises or, or any of those things. You don't have the ability to capitalize on market opportunities are trends. Really what you're doing is taking a passive approach to investing, not active. You're only taking what the market is willing to give you and sometimes the market not only doesn't give you very much, it, it takes away. In short, passive index investing, whether it be through an FIA or whether it be through a mutual fund, basically has no strategy except to do whatever the market does, and take whatever the market gives you. You know, it's rather like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn getting on a raft and floating down the Mississippi River. They're going to have to go wherever the currents take them. And, you know, I know a little bit about the Mississippi River and about Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn because I was born in and grew up in Hannibal, Missouri, and my great-grandfather actually arrived in Hannibal to stay uh, on a raft that he took down the river uh, helping with a, a logging operation that he was employed by. But here's the problem with that raft. It's just like being linked to a major index in a passive way. That raft must go where the currents take it. You know, you never ever hear about somebody taking a raft up the river even when it's advantageous to do so. You can't take a raft up the river. You're stuck going with the currents. Now, the indexing methodologies that you find in the market-linked CDs that utilize indices are different. They're cutting edge, and I think it's important for those of you who bought into the whole idea of indexing to understand how sophisticated and how out front these strategies are how much they've evolved from that first basic passive uh, indexing strategy. First of all, uh, if you've been around, you'll notice that although we have had market-linked CDs linked to major indices like the S&P 500, more often you're going to find that they're linked to a proprietary index with a very specific strategy. They also offer a guaranteed return of principal, just like an FIA, to address the concerns of most consumers today. Uh, no fees, uh, because there is no direct management required. And of course, it has the added benefit of FDIC insurance for those people who spell safety with those four letters. You know, one I've talked about uh, a great deal is the Morningstar Ultimate Stock Pickers Index. And so uh, I won't uh, spend a lot of time on this, but of course, this is an index that was a six and a half year uh, pure point to point. Uh, our last offering had 115% participation in the index, no cap, uh, linked to Morningstar's Ultimate Stock Pickers Volatility 7% Index. And of course, uh, the basics behind this particular index is that Morningstar, who's in the business of evaluating portfolio managers, has chosen who it believes to be the top 26 active investment managers in the United States, and then has created an index that reflects what these top money managers have in their portfolios. But more importantly, Morningstar reevaluates those portfolios every single month. And when the holdings in those portfolios change, based on a very specific criteria, Morningstar adjusts the index to reflect those changes. This is not a passive in index. This is an active index. It's dynamic. 
It's responding to economic changes. It's anticipating opportunities. It's taking defensive positions when the top 26 money managers in the country feel it's appropriate to do so. This is a living, breathing thing. This is not a passive uh, way of investing. In 2013, it returned 15.54%. Now, I know that's less than total market return, but remember, this doesn't have total market exposure. It is a principal-protected FDIC-insured product. And 15.5% ain't bad for a crummy old CD. Last 12 months period, 8.12%. Very, very reasonable returns. When you look at those other numbers on a chart that I showed earlier, keeping in mind that this product is completely principal protected and guaranteed, as well as FDIC insured. Uh, here's a list of the top 26 managers, uh, according to Morningstar. Uh, I like to point out that, yes, Warren Buffett is on here, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, but some other big ones as well, uh, Columbia, uh, Oppenheimer, FMI, Hartford, uh, Matrix Advisors, uh, some, some huge, very, very astute money managers. And this product can give your client exposure to, if not the entire S&P 500, at least some of the stocks most preferred uh, by those top 26 money managers. And of course, I've gone through these before. You know, and I've, I've had this slide up before too. If you could invest in a mutual fund, managed by the top money managers in the U.S. and were guaranteed a return of your principal in six and a half years plus any gains that would you invest? Folks, you need to have a paradigm shift. Market-linked CDs are mutual fund killers. Why would you invest and take the risk in a mutual fund if you had on your plate an opportunity to put money into the Morningstar Ultimate Stock Pickers? Here's another one that we introduced this month, um, one that uh, is linked to the PIMCO ETF on high yield bonds. Uh, that's where a lot of the smart money has been going in, in recent months. Of course, it's from J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, seven year product with a minimum guaranteed annual interest payment of 1% uh, linked to the J.P. Morgan high yield ETF volatility 3% index. And once again, no cap. And of course, this is this particular uh, index tracks the returns of the PIMCO 0 to 5 year high yield corporate bond index ETF. And I've spent some time uh, last week talking about the mechanics of that particular uh, ETF and so I'm not going to spend the time doing it right now. Uh, I will review it again of course uh, when we do our uh, product launch for the month of May. Of course, one of the key things about this particular index, this J.P. Morgan, Morgan uh, product, uh, is that it has a 3% volatility control on it. And what that means is that if the volatility on the PIMCO ETF is 3% or, left, or less, uh, then the index has 100% exposure uh, to the ETF. But if the volatility goes above 3%, which puts you in a riskier position, uh, the index then reduces, reduces uh, the exposure to the ETF to minimize the volatility. What this means is that in periods where the ETF, the PIMCO ETF, could take a volatile swing up or down, uh, the impact of those swings uh, is minimized by the formula. Once again, an active, not passive, index that's responding to market conditions. Uh, another interesting thing about this particular uh, index is that unlike the indices used in, in the, meth in the uh, calculation methodologies used on the insurance side of the equation, the calculations in this index is a total return calculation, which means it includes dividends. Now you can see the difference between the price return, which is just the market price of the uh, ETF, versus the total return that it pays out. The dividends on this product, uh, on that ETF, are quite significant. Therefore, the returns inside the index that reflect those dividends uh, is also very attractive. Uh, you can see some hypotheticals and actual historical performance here. You see it holds up you know, very well. Uh, against the overall bond market. Now, 
I'm going to jump ahead of myself just a little bit and talk about reintroducing uh, for the month of May uh, a new product. Uh, it's got the same name as a product that we had in the past, but it has been revitalized, refurbished, and souped up. Uh, it's a Goldman Sachs issue. You'll be hearing more about it when we do the product launch, uh, but it's called the Momentum Builder. And I've talked about the ability to take the various indexes that we have, the various indices, and mix and match them so that you've got a portfolio that is exposed to stocks, exposed to high yield bonds, could be exposed to commodities. You've got the ability to essentially plan out a portfolio by asset class to meet your client's needs. And oh, by the way, if you packaged those asset classes with exposure to the S&P 500 by being linked as well to a fixed indexed annuity, Folks, you've got a great recipe. This is modern portfolio management. This isn't, you know, one product, you know, wham, bam, and I'm done. This is building client loyalty and capturing assets. Now, the Momentum Builder is kind of standalone because it's designed to invest across several different asset classes all at once. Uh, it utilizes modern portfolio theory and momentum-based investing uh, in a mathematical format to rebalance this portfolio on a monthly basis. So it chooses select uh, and weighted ETFs across multiple asset classes, rebalances each month, and manages volatility on a daily basis. This is a CD that's linked to all of these different asset classes, money market, developed market equity, U.S. bonds, emerging markets, alternatives, commodities, and inflation-linked U.S. bonds. Look, there's real estate in there. There's gold in there. Folks, this is an index that you're really going to like because it's money management all packaged into one vehicle, principal protected and guaranteed and FDIC insured. You can see from this chart the multi-asset five, which is the red line. Uh, those returns compare very favorably to U.S. bonds, global equities, commodities, currencies, and U.S. real estate, all in a principal protected package with an FDIC insured wrapper. Take a look at these returns, starting down at the bottom in 2003. Go all the way to the right to find the annualized rate of return, 22.47%, 8.03, 2.75, 6.93, We've got one year, one year in this period where there was a loss. Uh, that was in 2008, not a surprise. But look, 2009, up 7.5, up 9.6, up 8.14, uh, 4.13, and uh, year to date, up 0.86 percent. Folks, this is a major, major performer. For the first time, you really get to be like a registered investment advisor, except with principal protected products. You can give your clients the appropriate exposure to stocks, bonds, commodities, uh, in a mix that makes sense for them. This is the future of investing. This is a speedboat that can also go up the river instead of just the raft that can only float down the river. Now, why do I say this is the future? Uh, because it's already the present in Europe. It's already the present. In Europe, you can purchase a market-linked CD from the post office when you buy your stamps. It's that popular in Europe. It's going to happen here. Why would you invest any way else? And why would you, as financial professionals, be a one-trick pony? <laughs> why wouldn't you want to go in and meet with a client or a prospect and be able to design a portfolio that includes not only market-linked CDs, but FIAs as well, that was as sophisticated as any RIA could do? Folks, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I've gone a little bit longer today than, than usual, but I, I will, as promised, try to answer as many questions as, as I can get to here. 
Uh, looks like most of you have decided to tough it out and, and stay uh, online <laughs> with me. So let me take a quick look and see what, uh, what questions we have at this point. Uh, Fred asks, can we get a copy of that BlackRock chart? Uh, yeah, Fred, we can uh, make available to you the entire report. It's about, I think, six pages. Uh, and uh, you, know, you could also get it online if you want to do that, uh, but we'll be happy to. Uh, make sure you get that. Uh, Terry says, can we get a copy of the graph showing the 40 best and 40 worst days? Uh, yes, Terry, I'll be happy. That's a, I'll make that available as well. Uh, Rick asks, can we get a copy of these slides? Uh, Rick, uh, on a selective basis, uh, I will send out slides. Here, here are the issue with my slide presentations so that, uh, so that you all know. Uh, when I'm doing a webcast like this, it is considered an educational webcast directed to insurance agents. Uh, I therefore have quite a bit of leeway when it comes to a copyrighted material uh, because I'm using it for an educational purpose and, and, uh, and, uh, and not with the, with the general public. Uh, use of these slides in a commercial manner uh, could put you in jeopardy of the copyright laws. And the other thing is that since I'm talking to licensed advisors, uh, you'll notice that there aren't a whole bunch of disclosures uh, on my materials. They would uh, therefore be inappropriate for use with the general public. But on a you know on a case by case, you know one slide by one slide basis, uh, I don't have a problem making them available. But uh, certainly not, I can't do the whole show. Um, Dick says, please reshow the slide about investing in a mutual fund managed by uh, Top Money U.S. Man. I, I'm not sure which one you mean, Dick, but uh, will be, get me on the phone and I'll be happy to, to send you uh, a copy of that. Uh, okay, uh, Robert has a question. I've had a few prospects ask if the government could get at their investment in these CDs. Their fear is what happened in Europe will happen here, government, government reaching into principles, uh, people's savings. Uh, I can understand that fear. I, Robert, I would just say that uh, in theory the government can get away with anything it, it wants to <laughs> up to a point. Certainly there are laws that would, would prohibit that, um, but could we have a catastrophic meltdown? Some people believe so, um, and, but uh, I, I think it unlikely. Jim says, could I get a PowerPoint to offer uh, in a public workshop? Uh, Jim, call me directly on that. 858-240-2059, uh, uh, and let's discuss uh, what your intent with it is and uh, see, what, see what we can put together for you. Um, okay, a little more from Jim. Uh, educational, okay, yeah, Jim, let's, let's talk and let's see what we can put together. Uh, together, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Uh, and Rick wants as many of my slides as I can share. Thanks. Okay, uh, folks, uh, I hear you and uh, appreciate you taking the time today. Like I said, we've gone a little bit over, and uh, so I'll uh, have to sign off now. I appreciate you taking your valuable time to be with us. Uh, watch for the announcement of our product launch coming up. I'm not sure exactly when we're going to have the materials, uh, but certainly very soon, and uh, make a note to uh, take a good look at that. Uh, Goldman Sachs uh, Optimax product. I think you're really going to like it. With that, we'll be back here same time, same place next Wednesday, 1135 Pacific. Until then, have a great week.